Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised in this session and in the subsequent one, we are going to observe some solved problems on non-deterministic context-free grammars. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will first observe two solved examples on the left factoring procedure. Thereafter, with the help of the second example, we will establish the proof that determinism cannot resolve ambiguity. Consider the first example. Observe the production rules. A can be rewritten as small a capital A B or small a B small c or small a capital A small c. Now, in order to eliminate the non-determinism, we at first need to identify the generic non-terminal A and along with that the alpha, that is the common prefixes. Also, we need to identify the betas. So, let's begin. Observe, here this non-terminal A is the generic non-terminal A. Now, if we observe closely, we can figure out the common prefixes of all the rules. In this case, it is these lowercase a's. Now, apart from the common prefix, the remaining portions of the right hand sides are to be considered as betas. So, here this ab is the beta 1. For this, this b followed by the lowercase c is the beta 2. And finally, a followed by the small c is the beta 3. So, we have identified all the components. Now, to eliminate the non determinism, we need to perform left factoring. That is, we will factor out the common prefixes of all these production rules and convert it to this form. So, let's do that. So, from the non terminal symbol A, we will produce the alpha or the common prefix, which in this case is this lowercase a. Now, this a will be followed by a new non terminal, say a prime. From this a prime, we will now generate the betas. So a prime can be rewritten as this beta one, that is a b, or this beta two, that is b small c, or this beta three, that is a followed by small c. So a's production rule is now completely free from non-determinism. However, a prime still is non-deterministic. Let me rearrange the production rules. Now, if we consider A prime as the generic non-terminal A, observe, in these two productions, these uppercase A's are the alphas or common prefixes. So, this B here will be beta 1 and this small c is the beta 2. So, these productions should now be rephrased as A prime can be rewritten as A, which is the common prefix followed by a new non-terminal, say A double prime. Now, from this a double prime, we will produce the beta. So, a double prime can be rewritten as b, that is beta 1, or small c, that is beta 2. Well, it is not complete yet because a prime could also generate b followed by small c. So, we need to facilitate that production as well. So, another production rule, that is a prime can be rewritten as bc, should also be added. So, now the entire set of deterministic CFG would contain the productions. A can be rewritten as small a a prime. Then a prime can be rewritten as a followed by a double prime or b followed by small c. Finally, a double prime can be rewritten as either b or small c. Remember, a is the start symbol here. So, this is how using left factoring procedure we can eliminate the non determinism. Let's now move on to the next example. Consider this grammar S can be rewritten as IETS or IETSES or A, and E can be rewritten as small b. Now, this production rule is pretty straightforward. However, this one here is the non-deterministic one. Let me illustrate. If we consider this S as the generic non-terminal A, then from these two productions, can you figure out the common prefix or the alphas? Observe, this IETS 
is there in both the productions. So clearly, these two are the alphas. Now we can state this production as IETS followed by epsilon. Now, honestly speaking, alpha and beta belong to V star. That is, these can be any string over only terminals or only non terminals, or these can be an intermediate or sentential form that is, a mixture of terminals and non terminals, or even epsilon. So, we can consider this epsilon as beta 1. And this E followed by capital S will be the beta 2. Since we have identified all the components, now we can proceed for the left factoring. So, S can be rewritten as the common prefix IETS followed by the newly formed non terminal, say S prime. Now, from S prime, we will derive the betas. So, S prime can be rewritten as epsilon or small e followed by S. Also, S can be rewritten as small a. So, we need to facilitate that too. So, we include the rule S can be rewritten as A. Now, the complete set of the deterministic CFGs would be S can be rewritten as IETS followed by S prime or A. Then, S prime can be rewritten as epsilon or ES. Finally, E can be rewritten as small b. Now, this is the grammar which will not suffer from non determinism, but will it be accepted by top down parsers? The answer to that is no. Why? Let me illustrate. If we recall the previous sessions, I told you that except for the operator precedence bottom up parser, all the other parsers, be that top down or bottom up, they reject ambiguous grammars. Now, this is the non deterministic version of the grammar, whereas this one is the deterministic one. Say we would like to generate this sentential form I E T I E T S E S. Let's observe how many ways we can derive this in case of both the deterministic and non deterministic versions. Let's begin with the non deterministic version first. So, starting from the start symbol S, using this rule, we will derive I, E, T and S. Observe, we have derived this portion. Now, for this remaining portion, let's use this rule. S can be rewritten as I, E, T, S, E, S. So, from this S, we will obtain I, E, T, S, E, S. Look at the yield. I, E, T, I, E, T, S, E, S. We have derived this intermediate form. Let's see if there is any other way. So, starting from the start symbol S, let's derive I E T S E S. Basically, this time we used this production rule instead of this one. Now, this time, say we have derived this I E T and this E S. Now, this portion I E T S is yet to be derived. So now we will select this rule S can be rewritten as IETS and derive the same from this S. Observe the yield IET, IETS, ES. So the same string can be derived in two ways. Basically, this version is ambiguous. Let's now check the non deterministic version. Now the start symbol can either be rewritten as IETS followed by S prime or small a. So, from the start symbol S, we can certainly derive IETS S prime. Again, from this S, let's derive the same. Notice we have derived this IET, then this IETS. Now, S prime can be rewritten as epsilon. Let's use this production and derive epsilon from this S prime. Now we only have to derive this ES. Using this production, S prime can be rewritten as ES from this S prime, we will derive ES. With this, the intended sentential form has been derived. But is this the only way? If starting from the start symbol S, in the first two levels, we derive the same things, Thereafter, this time instead of this S prime, 
we derive ES from this S prime and from this we derive epsilon. Notice we again found two new ways of derivations even with the non deterministic version. So, even if we remove the non determinism, that doesn't guarantee an ambiguity. So, let's understand why this intermediate form is ambiguous. Observe this intermediate form carefully. We can represent it using a structure of a program code. So, this IE is actually if E. Now, this T means then, that is the body of the if structure. Now, this IE is again if E, then this TS means if E, then S. This E actually means else, and clearly this S is basically the statement within the body of the else. So, this is the meaning of this intermediate string. Notice, this code segment matches with the derivation tree. If E, then, that is the body. Thereafter, if E, then S, that is this portion. And this ES is basically this else S. Now, in case of this one, this else portion, that is this one, was being associated with this if, that is this IET, which is clearly incorrect. So, if we modify the grammar in such a way that it can only follow this derivation tree, then only we can eliminate ambiguity. So, in this session, we observed two solved examples on left factoring procedure and we also proved that determinism cannot remove ambiguity because the reason for non-determinism is not really the reason for ambiguity. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe some more problems on elimination of non-determinism. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.